it's intended. Now, Liberal Senator Dean Smith had been pushing for a parliamentary inquiry. Uh, the government and the Prime Minister agreed to that today. The terms of reference are that it will look at Section 18C. Section 18D, a very part, uh, important part of the Discrimination Act that uh, some conveniently don't talk about, but also I think equally as important, the Human Rights Commission Act and the processes in which the Human Rights Commission is forced to undertake. When there's a complaint made, a written complaint to the Human Rights Commission, it is up to the Human Rights Commission to go down a conciliation path. That is, under the Act, it has no choice. So some unfair criticism being directed at Gillian Triggs. This is what Dean Smith had to say a little earlier when I spoke to him today. There are three elements to the inquiry. One is the law itself. Uh, the other is the processes that underpin the law in the Human Rights Commission. And thirdly, there's sort of a, a broader reference, if you like, around free speech issues as they were canvassed in the Australian Law Reform Commission approach. But I think this is why the calm, prudent approach that the government has taken um, is a sensible one, because it has captured all of those issues that have come to the fore in the last uh, 10 days or so. I don't think this is a left versus right debate anymore. We had Bob Carr only a few days ago uh, arguing that perhaps 18C needs to be looked at. Indeed, we had the President of the Human Rights Commission today saying that a parliamentary inquiry would be a reasonable next step. Not the current Labor opposition. Well, not the current Labor opposition yet. Who knows what will happen? But all I would say is that we've had very, very esteemed legal practitioners casting doubt on the suitability of the law. For ordinary people, they have seen a cartoonist students now come to the coalface of that law. So it is right now for right and prudent for Parliament to explore these issues and report back. And that's why I think that the joint committee process is a good one, because it involves senators who have, lots, who have had lots to say about this issue in the past, but also House of Representatives members. What about the criticism from Labor that Malcolm Turnbull has been dragged here by the right of the party and you know, those that would probably support Pauline Hanson. I mean, the broader question here is, I think that the Prime Minister is seen as not moving politics back to the centre where it needs to be, but almost having to pander to the right. Is, say, is that correct? Well, I'd say a couple of things. Uh, the politics of this are easy. The politics are intoxicating for some people and for some political parties. We understand that. But if you look say at some on the right in your own party have been intoxicated by those politics and exploited it for their own means. I think the terms of reference have been crafted very, very elegantly because they capture the current issues. Uh, in the statement from the Attorney General, it makes it very, very clear that the government does place the multicultural and social harmony aspects of our community at the apex of that. Do You're you, quite do right. you, I don't not, want, do you I don't not agree that, that Gillian Triggs must go through this process under the Act? Or do you think they've used, uh, interpreted the, the Act you know, at the, at the highest level and not be, not sensibly interpreted the Act. Is that what you're saying? Well, what I think has been a good outcome, as reported earlier today, is that the President of the Human Rights Commission has said that she believes that the parliamentary inquiry process is a good way, now these are my mm. words, to ventilate these sorts of issues. I think that is very powerful because it means that the President, I interpret that it means that the President of the Human Rights Commission will be engaged with the committee process. One final question. The same-sex marriage plebiscite will not go ahead. That matter is now to one side. You're particularly interesting in, in your journey on this issue. You're a member of the right of the party. You once didn't support same-sex marriage. You changed your mind. In a very uh, thoughtful column, you, you laid out why. Uh, you now don't support a, a plebiscite. Mm. You used to say this should be dealt with in, yes. by vote in Parliament. What happens now? Well, well, the first thing I'd say is that, you know, it may well be that a lot of people follow a journey like me. Um, a lot of people are conscious of how community attitudes are changing. Uh, this is a, a real issue for many families, uh, for many extended families, for many friendships. Uh, it's only been 24 hours, less than 24 hours since the plebiscite bill was defeated. Uh, I think we should just be calm methodical in terms of what the next steps might be around this particular issue. So one final question on this, Senator. Would you next year 
encourage another debate in party room, perhaps revisiting a free vote in the parliament on same-sex marriage. Now that there is no pathway for a plebiscite, is it time there's that re under a new prime minister formulate a new position? I don't want us to get ahead of ourselves on this, uh, but I do think it's totally reasonable that the issue of marriage should be tested uh, once in the life of the 45th parliament. Now, when that is, that's a matter for myself and others and, and for the Senate and for the House of Representatives to discuss. Senator Dean Smith, thank you for your time. Thank you.